YouTube as it go in the goat house is back with things to watch in a preview for the Green Bay Packers. We're working on this for every NFL team. We have a playlist on the channel. Make sure to comment on this video which team I should do next because that will decide which team I do next. I am very high on the Packers, it seems. I think a lot of people are high on them, but I think most people think it's a good team, a lot of upside, maybe a sneaky contender. I think they're a legit contender right now. We'll talk about reasons why, uh, but I think they're kind of built for today's game and this season, really. Um, so I think they're a little ahead of, ahead of schedule compared to what, how people are talking right now. So I do have them up in the big, big contenders uh, category. If you've been watching my videos, you probably know that. We're going to talk about what to watch, what you can expect, why I like them for this year so much, players to watch, games to watch, and of course, fans takes. Number three on my list here for the biggest things you, you could expect from them this offense, it has, in my opinion, elite balance, at least potential to have elite balance. So watch out for that. And what does what does that do to me? That creates a tough matchup, a tough game plan. They're just tough to deal with. And I believe they're going to be tough for anybody to play against every single week. Like even teams that beat them, I think, man, they're going to be going, those guys were tough. That was a tough situation because, you know, they can throw the ball. They can run the ball. They got good. They got a, let's go down the list here. Quarterback, check. And let's take out the debate that what love could be everyone has a debate for that is he going to be great do they want to see you want to see more could he be elite take all that out different debate do they have a good young quarterback with some upside absolutely check do they have a running game absolutely uh they have receivers they don't have a legit like elite number one receiver but they got some up and comers i think watson actually has elite potential maybe that's a little strong but if he stays healthy i he and i did not expect him to have that uh i i, I think he's you could see it um you know at least a little strong, but Jaden Reed, you know, they, they got all these young receivers that are continuing to get better over time, learning with their young quarterback. They have the offensive line for pass protection, run blocking there. It got so much better over the course of the year. Uh, and they added Jordan Morgan, the draft uh, coaching and not just like in game coaching, but especially with LaFleur, I think preparing for games, getting his players ready. The game plan always seems to be top notch. That script in the beginning seems to be absolutely fire. Uh, and I, I got to give them credit for the, like their 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 player development as well, and that is a coaching skill, of course. So they check every box. Like if we want to talk about, I mean, you can kind of nitpick a little bit where they're elite. You know, maybe they could get. You know, you wish they're a little more elite in some categories, but they looked really good down a stretch last year in the playoffs. Um, I thought Lafleur did a phenomenal job. I he everyone knows he's good. I I picked him for coach of the year last year. I I, I think he's better than people realize. Uh, and then love can continue to improve. We're going to talk about, a little bit more about that, uh, you know, that uh, in a little bit. But I love the balance. I even through, I mean, we're not really talking about defense with number three here, but even on defense, they're somewhat balanced. At least I think they can be uh, by looking at them on paper. But yeah, they're they're going to be tough for teams to deal with. Uh, I mean, you got a game plan for the pass to run everything, and if you kind of slow one thing down, it can beat you at something else. So they're going to play every week, play uh, regular season playoffs. They're going to play teams tough. Because they are built like that, so I don't think I think I don't think people give them that credit. I think they're one of the more elite ba offensive balanced offenses, if that makes sense. Uh, number two, let's talk about defense. No more underperforming defense. At least I ex I'm expecting. I'm expecting them to uh, kind of play to where they they should be able to play, and this is huge. And uh, I I love the approach. I'm gonna applaud them right now for their their defensive approach. Uh, this off season. And what I mean about that is, well, the Packers needed some things. They needed quite a few big things on defense. And usually when you say that about a team, it's like, all right, they need this position, this, position. they got holes. Not that's not the case with the green Bay Packers. They didn't really have major, major like holes in terms of units. Uh, you know, they, they, but they needed to go out. They needed to go out and get a better coach that kind of fit. I feel like that was the issue in the, in the past. I know people ripped the coaching on defense, but did it really mesh well? Did it really fit? I thought that was more of the issue. They need to go get a coach um, that kind of fit the players. I hit there's this the, the coach's scheme that kind of fit the players they already have. Um, you know, and they switch scheme. They're expected to switch schemes. Actually, start more of a base four three, uh, and you know, so they check check. They did those things, uh, and they added, needed a few things in terms of players. They needed a big time safety that was their biggest weakness last year. That they, they go get maybe the best available uh, that was possible in Xavier McKinney and free agency. Um, you know, they, they badly need a linebacker. You got a, you got a guy that should be pretty pro ready and he has a lot of things, 
um, in his in his uh, in the terms of his play style, Edger and Cooper. And I know they kind of need another DB that that is pretty versatile, and, and they get Javon Bullard, who I really like. And of course, they added more players, but in terms of starters, I thought they filled. They didn't have need a long list of starters. They already had the players. Uh, they were kind of just underperforming last year, so they checked those boxes. They didn't go out and panic because hey, we got a new coach, so we gotta yeah, we kind of gotta replace this, that, that, and just get all these new players and kind of start from scratch. They didn't do that. I love that. I love that. And I've been predicting the last couple of years the Packers to be a pretty good defense, and they uh, they were they were underwhelming. They they were lower than where I thought they were, but. Looking at them on paper, like they got the ball players out there. They got the ball players, and now now is the time. And they they got more of a defense. They're gonna mix things up a little bit. More of a defense, like I said, um, under Hayfley that that should fit what they have. Um, and their pass rushers fit this this style of defense much more. Uh, and we'll talk about. I mean, well, you know, Van Ness. I mean, looking at guys like that, like we're, how he played in Iowa. I think it's good news for him. Rashawn Gary. I'm going to go much more in depth about Rashawn Gary in the next section. A little spoiler that he's on that, but it's huge. Um, uh, Half uh, Halfley's got um, uh, defensive back background. I think that's fantastic. You know, with the Niners and then with, with Boston College. You know, and coaching in, in college, and that's kind of the NFL is kind of heading that way a little bit. So having that background is pretty big. So I, I think these. I think it should play up to where where the where how it looks on paper and what we kind of been expecting over the last couple of years. The big thing is, uh, the, the big thing is run defense, I suppose. But they got some breakout guys, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the interior. Wyatt, uh, the linebackers are young, could break out. You know, Kenny Clark's already a stud on the inside. They already have some pass rushers. Um, I, they're they're more balanced than I think people think there as well. And then number one. And a big reason why I think they are a legit contender, not just like a sneaky contender. I think this team is built to get hot at the right time. I think they're going to be hot for the most part all year, but I think they could get real good down the stretch. And look at last year. I mean, the difference from the beginning, middle, and end of the year going into the playoffs, quite the difference. They were legit in the playoffs. They they were legit. They outplayed the Niners. They outplayed the Niners for majority of that game. And of course, they got to close it out, you know, but kind of goes with the young quarterback a little bit, but in the Niners just being a better team at that stage, at that time, I should say. But talk about the Lions were so close to going to the Super Bowl because it was the NFC Championship game. They outplayed the Niners in the first half. They got outplayed in the second half, so it's kind of even. And the Niners figured out a way to win. Either the Packers outplayed the Niners for majority of that game. They do have to find a way to win it, of course, like I said. But they got real hot last year because, because I think the coaching is more – more made for that style like game plans are much more of a factor um you know in, in that stage of the season uh but the players developing and progressing and just getting better and guys kind of going from you know decent to really good or or even more um you know but i think it's kind of the same thing this year and some i think they're going to be good right away and we talked about kind of going back to number three we talked about other teams, you know, they're a tough game plan. Like, how, how do you game plan for that? Usually, though, and a lot of those teams we said that for, I'm kind of thinking they're going to be good earlier in the year until there's kind of a game plan that comes out. I don't. I think the Packers are like that first part. Like, they're tough to game plan for, but it's not going to go away. Like, this team is built to kind of handle it and adjust and just be a full-time tough game plan because the talent, the upside, the coaching – um, you know, the, the balance that they have uh, throughout this roster, in my opinion, at least. But so think about it. Jordan Love, where he was in the beginning of last year versus the end, and he's still learning. He still needs reps. So what, how how could he grow? The growth here, the growth, ridiculous, how he could grow throughout the season. Josh Jacobs, young stud running back, uh, you know, just stepping into that offense. I mean, he can get better as the year goes on. Marshawn Lloyd, who I think highly of, uh, could get better as the year goes on. They have young offense linemen that really broke out at the end of last year. They add a solid one, Jordan Morgan, in there. So this can just can only can continue to get better throughout the year. Same with the receivers, young guys. Like, it's everywhere you look, it's guys that can continue to get better and better. And on, on defense, they have some young pieces um, you know, some of the guys they just drafted, but Xavier McKinney's young is, you know, he's, I would imagine he continues to get better. I, I again, we'll talk about Rashawn Gary a lot more in depth in a second, but I think this defense fits his game a lot more young linebackers, Cooper and Quay Walker going to continue to get better. So it's a good team right away with a lot of upside is somewhat similar to lions. I think the Packers actually have more upside, 
Um, but that's what I love. Like a contender right away, but the, the, to me, like they just got to make the playoffs. Uh, I think they're gonna. I think they're going into the playoffs. I think they're gonna be more of. A, we're gonna be talking about them as more of a team that just just made the playoffs. But at the end of the day, to me, they just got to get into the playoffs, and then they're gonna get hot. That's how I view this team. I think they're built for the biggest stage of the season, and that's what I'm watching for the growth throughout the year. Um, the defense getting on track. And then, yeah, how, how good could Jordan Love and this offense actually be? Talking about some players. we got some really good players on this list. Uh, Josh Jacobs, their new running back. You think about it, Aaron Jones, longtime Packers running back. It's weird that he's not there. How good was he down the stretch in the playoffs? He was ridiculous. He could not be stopped, it felt like. Um, scoring touchdowns like, great, <laughs> like crazy. And the run blocking was fantastic. But winning with home run plays, but lining up and just just jam it down d- defense's throats, you know, punch him in the mu- punch him in the mouth. Uh, it was fantastic. So they move on from him, and it's like, whoa, this is different. But they had Josh Jacobs, and um, this shouldn't really be news at all. But Josh Jacobs, I love Aaron Jones, and he's very good. Josh Jacobs is going to be better as long as he's healthy, um, you know, than Aaron Jones. Uh, just a better running back right now at his at the stage of his career. And Jones is a little beat up here, and Aaron Jacobs had his injuries, but. Um, they value the running back position because they want to come out and they 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 want to wear defenses out and that's what they're going. This is that type of running back. That's that's what they're going to do with Josh Jacobs and he is going to be a major factor from week one all the way through. Um, so it, I think the most, way most people are talking is like, all right, they kind of stayed the same at running back. And I mean, Aaron Jones was insane in the playoffs last year, like down the stretch. But uh, to me, they, they got better. They got better, more fresh legs here. Um, it's going to be tough. You got to worry about Jacobs' physicality, but his home run ability as well. And you got to worry about that pass game. So Jacobs is going to be a. I, I think I, I if he finishes the year as the best, if we're talking about just 2024, if we're talking about who is the best running back 2024, Josh Jacobs, I would not be surprised. I, I think that's very possible, actually. Most likely McCaffrey, but I think that's. That's very, very possible that Jacobs is up there with this offense, and you know where that offensive line and that offense got. Number two, I'm going to go Rashawn Gary, kind of going back to the new defense. They're supposed to give kind of more four three looks. Uh, these guys off the edge are supposed to be more defensive ends rather than outside linebackers. I'm sure they'll switch up their looks. That's kind of today's game. No one's kind of stuck in their base defense the whole game anymore. Some teams are, but uh, to backtracking, Rashawn Gary come out of Michigan to me. That was a, a, a raw prospect, high upside. He has the traits. He has the flashes, hasn't fully put it together. I thought he was for sure going to get drafted by a 4-3 team. I didn't doubt him to play in a 3-4, uh, but I was surprised when a 3-4 team drafted him. So I like that this is going to be fitting more fitting for him now. This is his more his style, and he's been a great pass rusher as it is already. Um, you know, But I think he's going to break out even further. And he's been a guy where, kind of like Brian Burns, my my uh, take on Brian Burns, like they're they're better than what the stats show, and they're also similar because if you if you actually watch, like if you're not looking at the stats, if you actually watch these guys, um, they uh, you know what does he get like nine sacks? Feels like every like you feel like you want a little bit more, but if you watch, it's like it kind of doesn't. It probably doesn't make sense to some people, but. He get nine, he gets nine sacks, but he's on the brink. Like that was very close to getting like 15, 16 sacks because he's right there. And you see in the games, like he really goes off. He has that talent. So now, and he was a raw prospect. Actually, he was a little limited in production. He didn't fully put it together, but you could see it. You could feel it with him. So now's the time. Now is his time where he gets going more of a fit. It's about that breakout season for a stud pass rusher here, you know, in, in Rashawn Gary. Uh, so really excited to watch watch Gary in this defense. Uh, I'm expecting him to have his best season in terms of sack totals. Got to stay healthy. Number one, I mean, you have to go with Jordan Love here. A lot will be uh, decided uh, on on that. Like I said, the Packers are can realistically win the Super Bowl this year. But if Love is a little inconsistent throwing it up for grabs or playing like he did Earlier last year, I'm not really expecting that because I think he just grew from that point. Uh, but if, he, if any of those things I just said, they're not going to win the Super Bowl. It, common sense. They're not going to win the Super Bowl then or maybe even get that, that close. They, but I would expect him to play better, obviously, than he did earlier last year. But the way he – like, there's a lot of things up in the air. Like, he can just continue where he left off. 
Um, maybe that was like teams weren't ready for that. So maybe teams start the game plan for him a little bit better. But again, he's going to continue to develop, can, can continue to get experience. So, but maybe he, maybe he's not, you know, completely lights out like he was in the playoffs last year. I wouldn't, if he wasn't, I, I wouldn't expect him to be too much below that. Or there's a scenario where, I mean, hey, he just started for the first time, like in going into a season last year. He went from like, eh, to, oh, is this guy kind of bad? People were doing the memes, you know, love stinks. They were done with them to like, okay, he's getting better. So like, all right, Packers got another one. So does he continue? That's scary to think. Does he continue to go to continue, continue to climb? And that's, so there's a couple different scenarios, but I don't know if there's a scenario with him like being bad or just not capable. Like there's no scenario like that. Like he's going to be solid, uh, but is there still going to be, there'll still be some hiccups, but um, yeah, I'm just curious to see, cause that could determine how far the Packers uh, actually go this year and in the future. So those are the three. We had some big time players. Some other teams, I, some teams I have big name players, and some teams I have like uh, just just players you really got to watch. That more of a factor um, than you think. And then games to watch like these. I like their schedule a lot. Um, I think in the NFC North games are, are ones to watch as well. The last time they played the Lions could be huge. Those, those two teams are going to have a battle for the NFC North. The NFC North as a whole is pretty good. Uh, Bears and Vikings should kind of get involved in the near future, but to me, it's the Packers and the Lions for this year. Uh, I'm looking at at Rams in Week Five. Love that um, for multiple reasons. I always say it every year because it's it's a fact. It's the case that first three or four weeks, uh, like anything goes, like a lot of nonsense happens. It just kind of escape with the win. Um, not, nothing really goes fully to plan for any team. Sometimes, sometimes teams that. You know, it, maybe it goes better than planned. Maybe there's a little luck involved, but it just kind of teams kind of getting in, you know, in motion, getting used to things, getting in shape, figuring things out, getting game plans ready as more tape comes out because we're getting a little further along. So week five's like, all right, this is where the football starts. This is to me usually. This is where we really. Sometimes it's week four, sometimes five, sometimes six, or so somewhere in that range. Um, you know, look at the Packers early part. Like I think they're better in the teams than they play in the week one. Anything's going to happen in Brazil. Those are pretty even teams against the Eagles there. Week five rolls around. It's like, okay, let's get serious. We're going to LA, a veteran team, veteran Matt Stafford, Sean McVay, uh, LaFleur McVay, you know, similar system, similar background. Um, you know, th- th- this is a test. This is a test in week five for both these teams. It's going to be a lot of fun. Texans in week seven, I think pretty similar teams. I mean, CJ Stroud and Jordan Love draw comparisons to each other because they're young, up and coming quarterbacks that have those splash playability, can do about anything. And then pass first guys that can, you know, scramble through on the run, could run if they have to. Pretty similar, actually. Um, I think Stroud's a little more accurate. I think Love, maybe a little more flashy on the deep ball, but Stroud was really, had some splashy uh, downfield plays at the end of last year. But uh, these are teams of the future to me. Uh, Team, not only teams of the future, but more right now than people think. I think people put these both those teams in the category. We're like, watch out for these teams, especially in the future. They're more a little sneaky right now, a little dark horse. I don't think so. Like I, I maybe it's a little bold. It's not my prediction, uh, but it can be. But that could be a Super Bowl preview right there. Actually, um, maybe like if we fast forward another year, maybe it's more likely. Uh, but. I like that matchup a lot. And the Niners, a rematch, rematch of that game. Like I said, the Packers outplayed the Niners for most of that game, and they let it slip through. They had a good ch- chance at the end, and, and, and Love had an inexperienced moment. So, um, hey, down in Week 12 where they're getting better, they should be better than, the, than they were at the time last year where they outplayed the Niners for most of that game but lost. So what's going to happen this time? So a little preview for the playoffs there and just a good, good opportunity to see where the Packers are at. So I love those games for sure. Uh, but I like their schedule overall, and they're home in two of those games. Um, and the division games won't be easy. I know you have the Bears, Packers, the oldest rival rivalry. Uh, Packers, Vikings is a massive rival rivalry, and then um, Lions are the other heavyweight in the NFC North. So, uh, should be fun. Fans takes uh, some of the Twitter subscribers: Cam Sullivan, and Anthony Kramer played along again. Uh, what do we What do we got here? Offseason pickups uh, overall, say switch to 4-3. What will it do to our defense? Yeah, we kind of touched on that a little bit. Will they have a little bit of a learning curve? That's kind of the qu- uh, question there. But um, I think it – I'm trying to word that the best I can. Like, I think it's a good It's a good match. It's a good fit for players to scheme uh, compared to how they used to, how they were for the last couple of years. I, I didn't think it made a whole lot of sense. Um, 
Will they improve from a bottom tier special teams unit? Yeah, they've had their special team struggles. It's like they're kind of plagued with it. Um, and they add Bisaccia too, and it, 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 and I think they got better, but because it was disastrous a few years ago. But um, I think they can. I, the new kickoff rules can help them. Um, uh, yeah, so I think uh, could help their return ability as well. You know, so yeah, we'll see. That's something that's got to get better because if you make that one mistake in special teams in a playoff game, like that's it. Like that, you you muff a punt. Or something like that, you know. That's it. Um, yeah, how you know, love in their receiver unit? Can they continue to grow? Like, is someone going to step up at receiver? There's already some good ones. And then, well, how well will Josh Jacobs play? I, I think Josh Jacobs is going to play great in this team. Um, and I am blocking some of these Jordan Love progression from last season campaign. Yeah, does it continue? Yeah, we kind of talked about like, does it? Was he? He's definitely not at his peak, but is he like near it? Does he have a crazy ceiling? Because if you base it off of last year. And how it ended and what he could be. Like, you think the, the ceiling is pretty absurd. Uh, you know, so what love we're going to get? Uh, new r- uh, run game consistency. Um, let's see. Blocking a little bit. Availability of the player. Yeah, like uh, how, how available Josh Jacobs is. You know, Aaron Jones missed a lot of games. Uh, some type of defensive synergy play calling improved. Yeah, we were expecting that as well. Curious to see, like, they're covered at the end of the year. Um what coverages they run most of. That's something we're kind of waiting to see what we're curious about here. Uh, and then McKinney's impact. That's a big time addition to like, they had to have, them. they paid him a lot of money, good player, a lot of upside. They paid him a lot of money. They had to have him for that new defense. You know, a safety that could play in the box can man up, could also be a playmaker in the back. end. they had to have that guy. So they have to have some big time role here. Uh, some other, uh, regular Twitter followers here, ex followers, some things I liked. Um, yeah, him, uh, I'm Nighthawk, is that what it says? Uh, I like that he brought, like, who is the Packers receiver one? Christian Watson or, or Jaden Reed? Um, like, that's actually a good debate. Like, if Watson is fully healthy every week, you probably say Watson. Um, but if he's not, you probably got to go Reed. If they're, I mean, there's a chance that Reed is, even if they're both fully healthy. But Reed, yeah, Reed really came along at the end of last year. Like he's using gadget situations, but downfield, like he gets open in a hurry. He's really shifty. Yeah. Down the stretch. I mean, we started to realize how good he was, but the, uh, when they beat up the Vikings in that game, there was some, you know, I don't even remember his stats in that game, but there was a, like a couple routes, just a couple of them that I'm like downfield, even for a guy that was used everywhere, but mainly used the gadget play. I'm like, okay, this guy's, this guy is good. Like he is getting it together. Um, not that he needed, like, not that he was struggling, but, um, so that, I think it's a good thing there that they have that, and they have more receivers than just that that can step up. But, um, you know, I, I think that that's good that you have like two number ones. You don't have an elite guy, but you got guys that could be that good. How about the tight ends? We don't really talk about the tight ends either. They got, they got a two headed monster. That's going to continue to get better too. I should have mentioned that with the growth throughout the season, but, um, Musgrave has more of the upside, but Kraft really came along and was a big part of their game, big part of their game plans, actually, uh, early in games last year. Like, look at the, I think the Chiefs game is where maybe he started, but there was a few games there. Um, uh, they made a hot take. Uh, Packers D top 10. Yeah, I think they could be. I think they should be how they look on paper. Uh, Watson stays healthy, emerges as a receiver one. We just talked about that. Rebound years for some of those corners. You had to Stokes stay healthy and kind of get it together there. Um, and then let's see Ross gold. What did I like uh, from him? He kind of had the same thing. Can receivers take another step up from last year? Like that's the big question with them. They have all these guys that can help them win now, but they also have upside, which guys figure, which guys figured out, which guys hit that upside hard. Uh, like it's very, it's a very curious, a team to watch here for all those reasons. Jordan love will be in the MVP conversation this year. So a little bit of a hot take. I can definitely see it. Um, yeah, I mentioned it too. The schedule overall isn't, I mean, there's tough teams. There's always teams that step up, but I love that schedule for them. Uh, can Eric's, that's a big question for a lot of you guys. Does can Eric Stokes, Stokes return to form? I like their depth there at corner. Um, so even if he doesn't, they could be okay. And then Jacob Shoemaker, Schumacher, uh, uh, Lucas Van Ness. We talked about Gary with this new defense. I touched on it a little bit. Van Ness, yeah, he played hand in the dirt, even slid inside sometimes at Iowa. Um, you know, and now th- this is like the old school Iowa football. This is going to fit it. 
he's going to fit this new defense a bit more. So it's time for him, like breakout year. Could he be that guy? I know he has Preston Smith in front of him, but they got a pretty good rotation going there. But watch out for him to break out. Jaden Reed, 1,000 all-purpose yards inbound. It's definitely possible. I mean, he can get – because he runs the ball a bit. I mean, yeah, he can definitely – push over 800 receiving yards alone. Uh, new kickoff rules. We talked about that, too. Could benefit Nixon. Yes, yeah, so um, then anyone else in the league, he says it, it could. Uh, it's going to be weird and interesting how that new kickoff situation works. So some good takes, some good thing, good points to, that, that you brought up. That's kind of what I'm looking for with these. Bring up some things for me to talk about that maybe I missed on the rest, of, and there's no way of knowing before because I haven't done the video before when you guys mentioned that. But uh, I, I like when people kind of bring up stuff that I think people, they, everyone touched on the special teams, touched a little bit more on the receiver. Like, who is receiver one? Um, you know, and touched on Stokes a little bit, some hot takes. Love that. Um, uh, Lucas Van Ness. I almost want to say uh, Van Der Esch for some reason. Lucas Van Ness. Um, yeah, but it was brought up, so good to talk about him again. It kind of reminded me, like, yeah, that he's going to fit the second year, breakout. He's going to fit the new defense. All right, let's go. Um, so there you have for the Packers. Um, it's all going to depend on you know the how rapid the progression is, but they're already got started on that, so that's what I love. I think they're a sneaky, sneaky, legit, legit contender for this year. Um Need a little bit more consistent year. I think they'll get that because I think they had the kind of their hiccups, their, the youth hiccups early on, but we'll see. Uh, but that'll do it for this one. Uh, a lot of teams to do still. There's a playlist on the channel. Make sure to comment which team I should do next. We're always talking with you guys on Twitter. Uh, appreciate anyone for kind of getting involved here. Uh, Twitter link or X link pinned in the comments. Very useful. Sponsors down there as well. Uh, Liquid IV, really hot right now. Code GOAT. Check it out. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.